So when I was no, 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 what I'd like you to do, Kate, is to imagine your parents having sex. <laughs> 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 I, <fucking hate> it. <laughs> <laughs> I need more wine. Um, <laughs> Hello and welcome to Cross the Line, the podcast that brings you norm-smashing individuals with a lot to say, stories itching to be told, and messages that need to be shared. I'm your host, Emery Burke, she, her, hers, coming to you from the charming Casa de la Mi Padre Madre, pandemic style. Today we're on with Kate Spencer, poet, performer, and producer. She's a feminist, political, and a saucy fucker. She's working on her third book now in just over a year. She's unabashedly sex positive and wishes for you fabulous sex forevermore. And as a force to be reckoned with, Kate and I have agreed this conversation needs some wine. So, hello, Kate. Welcome. Thank you Hi. for being with us. Hi, darling. It's such a pleasure. Um, I am also she, her, hers. Thank you. How is the completely unlocked down New Zealand over there? You, you. Oh, <laughs> I am free to drink wine at 9.30 in the fucking morning. <laughs> And uh, thank you to the Fringe Bar last night for furnishing me with this bottle of wine. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Oh, my my second home, the the <laughs> bar where I do all my producing and performing. So yeah, yeah. I know you from Guangzhou, China, where we lived for a number of years together. I was in uh, the spoken word community with you over at Law Three Four Five, <gasps> Law Three Four Five over there. <laughs> I know. Oh no, I, my gosh, the dingiest dinge bar in the oh, dingiest the past. building. And it was, I was just like, oh, I uh, found my home. Then what was spoken word open mic there? What um, was this event we had going? Oh, what was it, darling? It, it was exactly that. It was just people who wrote performing. And for me, it was oh. the, my first introduction to the spoken word scene. How can uh, I? I know. Like, how had I not found it before? Yeah. And and these people were getting up and reading their their poems and reading their short stories and reading their yeah. um, not even reading, just making shit up off the top of yeah. their head and telling stories. And I'm just like, yeah. oh, you cunt! How can you be so clever? <laughs> Fuck you! What attracted you to that in the first place? Why poetry? Um, I'm a I fucking love words. Like, yeah, <laughs> and I, they're like, awesome. I really like them too. <laughs> And and it was the the kind of the way that you can kind of meld and form words with poetry, mm. and I kind of a sucker for a rhyme. Or what type of poet are you these days? I'm more of a free form rhyming poet. There's mm -hmm. less structure, but there's a lot of rhyme. There's a lot of mm -hmm. wordplay. There's a lot of um, a lot of fun mm -hmm. in my in my poetry. It's 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 poetry with a point, definitely. Mm -hmm my poetry's got more political at the start it was just like this is my body and this is what it does um but now i'm writing more more about well what about other people's bodies and what they do and and trying to be more political about gender and sex and sexuality and and really be a a stronger voice not just focusing on myself are you still a self-proclaimed sledgehammer poet yeah like i like to what does that mean there head. um so i'm just like i there's no subtlety in me <laughs> um all my poetry i i am um, just hit you over the head with with my opinions you know while leaving space for you to have yours obviously but also like you cannot miss what i'm saying you have some sledgehammer poetry uh and some opinions to share i was wondering if you I wouldn't do. start us off with a little bit about your feelings on JK Rowling. Would you mind sharing a little bit? Oh my gosh, I would be so happy to because um, I've just been so hurt by what mm. she's been saying, what she said, how she feels about the trans community. I'm cisgender, but uh, I have many, many friends who are not and it hurts them and mm. I hurt with them. So I've written this piece called Fuck JK Rowling. Fuck JK Rowling. There she goes again, rolling up her sleeves against trans women. We see her trolling, fouling up her legacy, defending her perfect vision of femininity, a raging turf, dismissing anyone who isn't cis, rendering gender back to the binary. Trans women are not pretending to be women. They are 
women. Genitals and reproductive organs, however seductive, do not dictate your identity. Yup, you can have a dick and still be a girl. Whatever you are assigned at birth can be refined. You can define what it means to you. And has she ever heard of non-binary, genderqueer, intersex? Fuck JK Rowling and her hatred for the phrase people who menstruate. Her illogical, non-biological standards of womanhood. What good does it do? Do migrants in ICE facilities forced to endure hysterectomies sterilised? Races systematically destroyed by 45's genocidal tendencies? Do they no longer qualify? Fuck JK Rowling and the traction on Twitter, this bitter bitch, heavy hitter of the publishing world, taking us from derivative storylines to a narrative of fear. That trans women are a danger is deranged. You are the murdered, not the murderers. And she, defiant, fuels the aversion, revulsion, repulsion, thinking her essays are brave when countless trans women are buried in paupers' graves. Witchcraft isn't dangerous, but these spells she casts from her position of influence sure are. Trans people are derided for who they are, hiding in the closet because it's safer there, cloaked, choked into invisibility, the inability to see beyond heteronormativity, reducing people instead of being inclusive, lacking in humanity, seeking to exclude, brooding in bullshit imbued with prejudice. Right-wing neolibs kiss her ass while a generation of Potterheads lie distraught, wrought in two by their idol, named and shamed as the woke left. And she's just broken, bereft of compassion, her pen name playing games with the community's mental health, Dr. Robert Galbraith, who put his faith in conversion therapy because queer cannot be. And please, NZ, let's ban that and put it to bed. Fuck JK Rowling, bowling her way in this world, making shit harder for an already guarded group of humans just trying to make their way in their truth. So I say, as loud as I damn well can with my minuscule voice, trans women are women, trans men are men, non-binary people exist, fuck JK Rowling. Oh, I have so much love for you. I, I, I think I missed your point of view on that one, though. Um, do, do you like <laughs> Tell us how you really think, Kate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, cancel culture sucks. Yeah. So when I say fuck JK Rowling, what I mean is fuck her opinions on trans people. She needs to have someone who is saying to her, you're wrong. And she needs people to keep telling her she's wrong um, mm. until she maybe comes around to the idea. And if she doesn't, then we'll just keep telling her. Well, here's to one person in particular saying so. So thank, thank you very you, much, darling. Kate. You're mm. welcome. Yeah. Speaking of narrow, you were discussing narrow-minded, thinking mm. things that are narrow. How did you find your badge? <laughs> um, it just reminds me of that that line in Mean Girls. It, I can't help it if I've got a wide set vagina. Um. <laughs> you you said that you first started doing spoken word in Guangzhou, well, at least yeah. performing spoken word at a spoken word open mic. Yeah. So it sounds like self-expression. I'm sure you've been writing forever, uh, I, but know, yeah, writing oh. writing was a thing, but but masturbating but, was even bigger. Um, <laughs> could I, you tell us a little bit of your path towards self-discovery, both as, yeah, as far as self-expression yeah. as well as finding your own body? Then, yeah. So I used to be musical, and then I was more like I found words. And I started writing poetry when I was a teenager and I read journals and they were shit because, you know, journals are shit when you're young. I, I had so many feelings. <laughs> I was like, what do I do with all these feelings? Oh my God. And so, so some of them went to, um, down, down south towards my vagina and some of them were expressed on paper. And then one day I found a, a my, I was given a squiggle wiggle writer pen. <laughs> like a vibrating pen because like my parents knew I liked writing uh, and then that vibrating pen found its way down there and I was like I've got a clitoris I've got a clitoris I've got a clitoris I didn't know it was a clitoris then but I was like why does it feel so good <laughs> and then the battery 
face ran out on this vibrating pen and I just started mashing it into my clit, not knowing what the fuck was going on. Oh dear. Um <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps this is a good segue to uh, introduce your your book itself, which I have. Thank you very much. Yes! So this is your first book, Squirt, and it seems to me that this is part of your self-exploration, both as far as self-expression as well as your body in there as well. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if you wouldn't mind reading a poem about your discovery. I think you'll find this discovery on page 11 there. This is actually a more recent discovery. Is it? So, yeah, um, this discovery is is only like three years old. So one, I've been wanking since I was 10. Uh, I'm now 38. Um, and, uh, and so this is, this is 35 years in the making, or oh, 25 years in the making. But yeah, this is, um, this poem is, holy fuck, I'm a squirter. Holy fuck, I'm a squirter. How did I not know this? Sex has always been my friend, never a chore nor a bore, but neither my good self, and I'm very good, nor any of my previous lovers 40 has ever made me squirt. <laughs> no matter how hard we'd flirt, how big a penis he or she would insert, I thought I was alert and in tune with this body of mine. You could bet I'd be wet in a heartbeat. But with this new information, I have a fascination. Holy fuck, I'm a squirter. I thought it was only in porn. No one warned me I could ever be this moist as my lover foists a fist inside. Splash Mountain is ready to ride my vaginal fountain. Gash making a splash. Water feature in Lady Garden. Lover's cock hardens. He's even more aroused when he's doused, soused with whatever the fuck these floodgates have opened. You'd probably expect me to scream as a stream of who knows what gushes, but there's a kind of hush, silent straining as it's raining down a biblical flood. Blood vessels burst, muscles clench. I drench the sheets with female ejaculate, ruining my previously immaculate bed. Cascading waterfall, boyfriend having a ball, slapping his geezer against my gushing geyser. Monsoon season begins, but what is the reason I have never discovered this before? Holy fuck, I'm a squirter! And what a palaver. Flow interrupted. So dominant is he with my prominent spot named G. New cry of foreplay. Bring on the sex towels! Will foul things up. Still, I seep through the crumpled heap. For easier cleanup, we've bought sheets designed for kids who piss themselves at night. It's all right. Now they get saturated, my fella infatuated with my fanny. Oh, he has a canny knack with his fingers in my crack. Hands that activate the schemes band. So well versed is he in my anatomy. It's his fault he's immersed and I'm guaranteed to gush. Cheeks flush. It's fucking lush. Apart from the mopping of the sopping bedclothes, a whopping mess from orgasms. Multiple. Full body spasms. Not just one almighty sploosh letting loose the juice, but over and over and over. And honestly, I get dehydrated. But my appetite won't be sated, and we forego cuddles to clear up the puddles, lakes, pools of drool. Now to end my poem, I think. A random 90s British trivia link. Someone called the Guinness Book of Records, I need adjudicator Norris McQuirter, because holy fuck, I think I'm a record-breaking squirter. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love that poem so much. I'm really glad to bring this up because we do have something of a more recent uh, reference in pop culture to connect this squirting poem to. Wop, wop. wop, wop. That's my new walk on track. Is it? Um, oh my God, yes. Hell yeah. Cut, like, I fucking love Cardi B for doing it. Yep, Honestly. Yep. But I think it doesn't go quite far enough. You know, mm. I think it's still within the realm of male sexuality and what men expect and what men want. And the, mm -hmm. the, it's just, I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it for for you and your pleasure. It's still within the realms of sexuality that the men yeah. express. And it doesn't quite, doesn't quite push into like, 
well, hey, I can masturbate and make myself wet and do it for myself, you know? Like, it's very much for the male gaze still Mm -hmm. and not for empowerment of yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think it doesn't quite go far enough, but fucking power to her, honestly. And to hear hear a a woman of colour being so overtly sexual and so proud about it is yeah. just so astonishing so fuck i love cardi b for so many reasons um and yeah empower that wet ass pussy i say cheers <laughs> but yeah i was i was doing it before she was just saying oh, well there we go uh, <laughs> it, she's it's... just made it maybe made it a little easier more acceptable for me to talk about it which is yeah. great Maybe What's I made it more acceptable. Maybe sh- maybe Cardi B heard of me. You. Maybe sh- maybe Cardi B watched my video on Squirt and went, "I can beat that." <laughs> definitely, we'll have to ask That's her. It. it sounds as if your relationship to sex has changed quite a bit over the years. <laughs> yeah, well, I've always been really sexual. I've always wanked a lot. Like my teenage years, it was like. <sighs> let me touch myself <laughs> i couldn't wait to get to bed and and wank and i had to learn the art of the silent wank obviously living in a home with parents and sister but there is no such thing as a silent wank anymore far yeah, i was about to ask I'm you like, the secret for that no no mm. no but also don't don't be quiet there, sh- there should be no shame in wanking and having an orgasm like there should be yeah. absolutely no shame in doing something that is perfectly natural and that brings you so much pleasure you know, it seems like, for that reason that you and Michelle created uh, something special, yes? Yeah, we've got a podcast together called A Couple of Sluts. Um, Michelle came to see my show, Squirt, at Fringe, Fringe Festival in Auckland. Michelle is a sex positive, she's a luminary, a sex luminary, and she does courses and programs with people to, to empower people with pussies to get really in touch with them in in all ways um and she does couples counseling for sex therapy and stuff like that and yeah we've we've done a a podcast called a couple of sluts and we talk about the joy of sex and and the problems people have with sex and and try and kind of fathom our way through the mm-hmm. myriad problems that people might have and the reasons they they have those issues so like i say i, I grew up christian and sex is very much put on a pedestal and it must be saved from marriage and i think that is such a damaging specifically narrative. making babies within marriage yeah specifically females people with vaginas you are not allowed to feel pleasure you are allowed to procreate but pleasure is not for you you are the object of your husband can i ask a little bit about your parents what were their views on sex <laughs> so when I was no no, no what i'd like you to do kate is to imagine your parents having sex <laughs> 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 I need more wine. Um, <laughs> well, when I was 13, my dad told me to stop hugging toys and start hugging boys. Um, no kidding. Oh, wow. Okay. That's so catchy. So, I know, right? It's slogan for life. Uh, except I also had girls and non-binary people too. Thank you very much. Um, I, I was obsessed with the human body and they were lovely mm. and gave me all the all the reading materials that I could desire. But they were a little more awkward about it, about mm-hmm. discussing it. And I was naive as fuck. I mean, now, now my dad sends me sex memes on Facebook. and that, <laughs> Is that an improvement or a deprovement? I'm not sure. It's certainly, I don't know many other people whose parents send them sex memes, you know? Yeah, um, I send my parents sex memes. They have yet to return the favor, but we're we're, <laughs> we're working on that. We'll get there. Can I ask you, uh, how have your beliefs about yourself changed then coming from these places? It sounds like they had a lot of views about the way that you should be living your life. And so that you internalized a lot of these yourself. How has it worked revising them for you? I've just broken up with my long-term partner, but we're still living together. And I was talking about it this morning and with him. And he said, you just seem so much more confident, Kate. And I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks. It's like quelling, quelling all that shit from other people and going, no, no, I really love what I do. It makes me feel whole. It makes me feel like i'm doing good in the world when a woman or anyone like 
any gender comes up to me after a show and says, I was really impacted by that. I know that I've done good work. I know that I am speaking to people Mm -hmm. and allowing them to be themselves too. Like I am unabashedly, unashamedly who I am here now and on stage. And that allows other people to be them too. I just, I just want to be someone who can, can project some, some positivity into this world. And because I've had negativity and people telling me I shouldn't be who I am and I've rejected it, I can be that, that voice out there saying, be yourself for fuck's sake. (laughs) Um, And they'll be like, oh, she's got, she's onto something there. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Well, it it seems. It seems to me that you lead by example in teaching acceptance of the self, acceptance of all we are and who we are. And, and in that spirit, I was wondering if I could ask you to read another poem. Darling, you can. Yeah, this poem has a particular expletive um, that involves your trousers. <laughs> you like. Teach us uh, how to find acceptance with our bodies. Yes. Um, this happened when I when we lived in China. I was mortified until I wrote a poem about it. This is called (laughs) Shit in My Pants. (laughs) Have you ever had that feeling when you're bloated and so full? You know you need a toilet fast and all you want is to pull your pants down and shit where you are, but you can't? Well, yeah, of course you have. The waddle of the holding in, the sweat that joins the crazy walk, the bubbles in the stomach, inability to talk because you're concentrating so hard on not letting go. Clench those buttocks, use those muscles, you know the ones. Just keep going, you're able, not far now, almost stable. And then the fear, the knowledge, the tear that rolls down your face, nothing will work. The muscles relax and it's happening. Shit in my pants. An explosion so mighty. Butt, legs and all now shitey. Oh, and piss too, just to rub it in. Evacuation of bowels, emptying of bladder. Is there anything in this world that can make me sadder? Distressed, disturbed, dismayed, disappointed. Any other dis word you like. Mortified, mystified and alarmed. How could this happen to my life thus far charmed? And what to do? with the shit in my pants. A failed phone call to a friend adds to the despair. Second on the list should help as people begin to stare and notice the wetness of the legs and the face with misery contorted. My friend answers and I shakingly explain, get home Kate before it happens again. I sidle up and hug the wall, sidestepping like a weirdo, not keeping my cool at all, panicking that people can see but worse, that they can smell the unmistakable odour of shit in my pants that I can't get away from, that offends my nose, but what do you suppose I do? I'm closer to home now, but still appalled. My friend on the phone, completely enthralled. A girl stops to help. Dear God, stay back. You have no idea what's just escaped from my crack. I've got shit in my pants. The rain starts to pour, my ego bruised and ridiculously sore. I take a peek behind me, the only stain on my skirt from the wee. I quicken my pace on the road to my home, thank God, up the 55 steps I race and strip off the sodden clothes, peel them away from my skin. Poop falls to the floor, look at the fucking state I'm in. I shower for what seems like an age, excrement circling the drain, praying it will never happen again. But at least it's the story to tell. I'll look on the bright side and take the right stance about the day I shit in my pants. (laughs) I'm sorry, this piece just kills me. It really does. This this poem has gone down in history in our family. It has. (laughs) My dad absolutely fucking loves this piece like he (laughs) recites it down the pub to his mates i've recited it to paramedics who have been treating my mother um he just fucking loves it and i've recited it to a a camp of youth group um kids (laughs) and i've and the there was a sign language interpreter the kid who was being interpreted to said did that really happen 
really did. <laughs> I also was invited to do a very proper talk at the library for um, something called Lit Crawl, which is a word word and language festival. And they said, you need to do true stories told live. And I was like, well, I've got a true story. <laughs> and I read this poem to a bunch of old white people. <laughs> I've never been invited back. <laughs> One of my friends I, was at the event that I said that poem uh, and they said, Kate, why? Why do you do this? You're such a good poet. You don't need to shock people like this. And I'm like, the thing is, I do. I, I really do. Because if I don't shock people, then how are they going to have a conversation? How are they going to have a conversation afterwards about it? You know? <laughs> well, I did have one last question for you then if that's all right and that's not to say we need to get off right now but i am going to stop oh, recording you want to get it off with me you want to get yeah, it off i do with me? i do okay i no, do i want to too <laughs> all right all right if you could have any superpower what would it be and why i would i, I would just I, I would have the power to say to someone everyone's cool <laughs> <laughs> love everyone fuck off <laughs> with your isms <laughs> i would mojo the fuck out of everyone <laughs> and just be like love <laughs> can you just fucking love each other please <laughs> love are you saying this is not a superpower you currently have because it seems um, as if you do oh thanks darling i wish yeah. i did i wish i did but there's so much work to be done isn't there kate you are a riot as always i've enjoyed oh. having you so much on here thank you for joining cross the line thank you, you darling cross the line bye <laughs> oh no pouring down my throat <laughs> this is the result of me pouring wine down my shirt Sorry, world. Sorry, audience. Kate, I need to hear where can people find more of you? What are your links? What are your apps? Uh, www.creativekate.com. That's C-R-E-A-T-I-F-Kate.com. And I'm the same handle on Instagram and Facebook. I don't have a Twitter because fuck Twitter, basically. So yeah, check out my website. Check out my Instagram. Check out my Facebook befriend me come say hi slide into my dms darlings <laughs> this has been cross the line the podcast that brings you norm smashing individuals with a lot to say stories itching to be told and messages that need to be shared next time we're on with yogi chandra kant he's an experienced yoga and meditation practitioner who has a compelling story to tell on the modern day caste in india and abroad and has a lot to say on how you can find some peace in these trying times don't miss it Cross the Line is an EB Words production and is unaffiliated with any major media label at all. I'm faking it till I make it here, folks. If you'd like more EB Words, please check me out at ebwords.org or any of my social channels. If you like this episode, please help me out and give it a like and or a share. Tell me you like it. Please tell me you liked it. Um, oh, look, I've got a black tongue from the wine. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> we have a new screenshot for this episode. No, no, don't. <laughs>